Good, good morning, Warriors. We are live here at the quarantine, and it is Monday, and today is a really fun hurricane. We've got a lot of really great stuff for you. We've got some strength stuff, we've got some ab stuff, we're gonna do a breathing exercise at the end to uh, um, calm your nervous system and help your, help your Monday morning get started off right. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff to get through. I'll get right into the story of the day, which is about Henry Ward Beecher. Now, Henry Ward Beecher is a um, 19th century uh, clergyman, poet, abolitionist, just forward thinker and all around go-getter. And uh, uh, he had a really interesting school experience that uh, he believes helped shape his attitude uh, for the rest of his life. And um, you know, he was in school when there was a lot of rote memorization and he had to memorize passages and, um, and, and parts of books and plays and um, historical works. And the teacher calls on him to do one of his, well, a recital of, of one of the things that they were working on. He stands up and he begins to, because he studied hard and um, he really liked school, and he began to recite his, uh, uh, his piece. And his teacher, um, right in the middle of his, of his uh, monologue, says, no. And he is kind of shocked and uh, sits down. And you know, he's uh, self-conscious. He's afraid that he was doing it wrong and he's going to get some negative feedback. And his, uh, uh, so he sits down. His teacher calls on the student next to him. And uh, that student stands up and starts to make his rec recital. But in the beginning of his, she yells at him, no. And he, uh, uh, the student just ignores her and goes right through uh, all, the, all the lines that he had memorized and um, recites his stuff perfectly and, uh, and sits down. And the, the teacher says, very good, very good, Jim. And then moves on to the next student and then calls on him. And after class, he uh, goes up to his teacher and he's like, I don't understand why you're yelling no at you know, all these kids and you're, you're interrupting them. It's distracting and it's scary, kind of scary. And then his teacher was like, well, in life, people are going to try and interrupt you. They're going to try and tell you no. They're going to, the world is try, going to try to take away your permission to succeed. And you need to become immune to the, uh, the feedback that you're getting from the outside world. So. You were, you were right, you had all your lines right, but you weren't confident. You weren't, you, you know, you weren't confident when you were trying to deliver them. So uh, that's, that's a big part of how you show up and how successful you are. So she was teaching all of the students in his class to um, ignore negative feedback, which is uh, uh, really interesting, really awesome, probably jarring if you're a student at the time, but uh, he went on to be um, a very prolific writer and a great teacher and, uh, again, accomplishing a lot of things in his life that were difficult, were against the grain, and if he were looking for a lot of positive feedback in his line of work, he probably wasn't going to get it. So uh, he was set up to be a change maker. Now, um, I'm not going to be yelling at you no uh, while you're trying to do your push-ups and do your, do your sit-outs and do your hurricane. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it well, and then I'm going to continue to, um, to give positive feedback on the things that you're doing right. But just know, if you, if you look around, maybe it's your phone, maybe it's the news, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of negativity in this world. And the better you get at, at having blinders on, tuning them out, the, more, uh, the better results you're going to get just for your life, your mental health, the things that you accomplish and what you're trying to set out to do. So don't stop the rock. All right, it's Monday. Let's, uh, let's stretch it out, have some fun. All right, we're going to start out on the ground. We're going to loosen up the hips, the chest, the shoulders, and the lats all at the same time. We're going to do a half kneeling arm circle. So I'm here, my extremely white legs and my Deadpool socks, but I'm also going to push my toes into the floor on the back side push my leg into the floor, tilt that pelvis, flatten out that spine. Now I can feel that stretch going on in the quad. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a very exaggerated circle. So my palms facing in at first, I'm going to keep my rib cage down, 
I'm gonna let that shoulder drift all the way out of my socket there, really stretching out that shoulder and lat. Then I'm gonna reach that arm up, continue pulling that rib cage down. And even here, where I'm up above my head with my hand by my, or my uh, ear by my bicep, I'm gonna stretch even higher up to the sky. So just because your arm is moving through the range of motion doesn't mean that anything is happening or being created. Then I'm gonna rotate at the shoulder all the way down as I push that door shut. Shoulder's gonna drift away from my ear, come back down into that neutral position. Then I'm gonna go back out the way I came, pushing that shoulder away from the ear first. Then I'm gonna rotate, spinning that upper arm back up, rib cage stays down, all the way up, pushing that lead foot down into the floor. So I'm really pushing some, putting some pressure on that hip, stretching, coming all the way through. Boom. Nice. So loosened up just a little bit. Now I'm moving to the other side. Shoelaces into the floor. Flatten out that pelvis. Put, pulling that arm down. I'm going to go forward. I can feel a lot more in my hip on the front side here. So I'm going to be very present with my hip tilt, pushing my fingers out far ahead, reaching further and further out, all the way up, stretching up to the ceiling, rotating at the arm like a rotisserie chicken, all the way back. Boom. Coming back down. Then, gonna come back the way I came. Getting that elbow locked. Rotating out. Palm facing inside towards my body. Rib cage down. And then if I try to hurry, Usually that's when I'm shortening up that range of motion. So I'm just going to take care of myself, go a little bit more slowly than I think I need to. Whew. Yeah. Now, loosening up the hips, we're gonna get on our backs. We're gonna do uh, the dead bug. And here I want you to focus on breathing. It's breathing month. And when we're breathing through the dead bug, remember, I want you to push your belly out and, and Brace that core. So your core should be tight the whole time, but not flexed and pulled in, pushing outward in that Pilates style strength breath here. So I'm, I'm gonna be up on, in the, on my back, hands pointing up, knees pointing straight to the sky. And then I'm gonna take my left hand and my right foot, and I'm gonna stretch them out as I keep my rib cage down, my spine flat, going as far as I can go while maintaining control of my body. So I'm not going to force it. It doesn't matter how far you go. What matters is that you're really giving yourself time and space to explore what it feels like to go through that movement. So here I am rolling out, coming back, out, back. So I'm feeling my hips pop, my shoulders pop, my back pop. That's good. So we're gonna go one more on each side. Whew. It's really challenging for me to keep my rib cage down. So I'm shaking already, just trying to maintain this control. Ha! Well done. So we've just had that dead bug, kind of um, activated the core, set the hips in position. Now we're gonna do a lying hamstring mobility. So we're gonna be on our back again, and this time, we're really trying to allow that pelvis to do two different things, a lot like we were in the dead bug, but this time it's gonna be more dramatic because we're gonna lock out the knees. So we're here, legs are locked. I'm gonna grip one leg. Both of the toes are pulled down towards me. Then what I'm gonna do is come down, touch the ground with one heel, come back up, switch, down, touch, come back up. So for me, I lose my toes on the way down. So I could feel my toes starting to 
point out. So I want to stop that. I really want to give them the opportunity to stay dorsiflexed. Ow! You can feel that in the back of my leg, my calf. It means we're stretching that fascia. We're obviously mo mobilizing something. Woo I'm just going to do a few reps, <coughs> five per side, just to get those hamstrings ready for our kettlebell swings that we're about to do. Going through it. Yeah. Ha ha. Nothing like a little burning to wake you up in the morning. Okay. So we're also going to be doing some squats. So let's get our squat warmed up. And we're going to do this with a squat with a hamstring bias. So we do these ones to, again, stretch the lower hamstring and uh, stretch our upper back. So I'm standing feet about shoulder width apart, toes out to a 20 degree angle. I'm going to drop down into the squat. I'm going to touch the inside of my shoe. I'm going to grip my toes if I can. Chest stays up. I'm going to inhale as I reach up. Come back down. Inhale. Come back down. So I'm breathing. And then I'm going to add a squat. So I'm going to tuck my chin to my chest. Exhale. Locking out the knees. Coming back. Inhale. Reach up, inhale, reach up, exhale. Ah. Whew. So we're going to do five of those. I'm going to fix my mic real quick. Boom, done. Now I'm doing it again. Inhale, inhale, chin to chest. Ah, so good. Chin to chest. Woo One more. Exhale as you stand up. Wow. Ha. All right. Oh, I'm really getting those lower hamstrings fired up. So we've stretched, we've strengthened, we've moved things around. Um, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to activate the lateral fibers of our glutes and our uh, obliques by doing some side plank with dips. Just because we don't do a lot of those um, movements that are not in the sagittal plane or the straight, straight on plane. So I'm going to be here and then I'm just going to lift, hit, touch my hip to the ground, lift, we're going to go 10 on the left, 10 on the right. So I'm getting that C shape way up there. Five. Hand up if that makes you feel better. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Whew. This one's tough for me. Ah. It's a good thing I'm doing it then. Going back to the other side. Stacking the feet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ha ha. All right. Now. We're going to get ready for a hurricane by warming up our, our swing. So the most important part about a, a deep hinge position is your core engagement. A lot of people feel swings, deadlifts, and squats and their low back, and they do that, they feel that because they're, they're not stable through the core. So remember, we kind of want, we walk around kind of arched a little bit, 
Well, in our training, we want to train in this pillar position. It might feel like a slouch, but it's actually more, more ergonomically correct. So my rib cage is pulled down. My butt is slightly tucked so that my spine's a little bit more flat than it usually is. And from there, I'm going to hinge. I'm standing in front of my kettlebell. And I'm going to reach my butt back and touch that handle. So my butt's traveling way back. Knees are bending, but yeah, look how far my butt travels back and my chest forward. It's much more dramatic than a squat. Again, if you don't have a kettlebell or a big enough dumbbell to swing at home, you might be warming up your squat right now, which is fine. I'm gonna do 10 reps here, squeezing my butt cheeks on the way up, really trying to crack the walnut here. Then I'm gonna stand over my kettlebell and I'm going to do the exact same mo movement. This time I'm just gonna pick it up. So butt back, chest up, driving the hips forward, setting it down. I'm gonna do 10 reps again, squeezing my glutes every time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! All right. My butt cheeks are warmed up here. Hamstrings are warmed up. Stretched and strengthened. So we're going to do one round of kettlebell swings. <clears throat> but this round is going to be a special round because we're still warming up. We're still practicing. But I want this to be only a one rep swing, meaning we're practicing just the first rep of a set. So I'm gonna do these one at a time. I'm gonna kick my butt back, chest is up. I'm gonna grip the handle, tilt it towards me, and then I'm gonna use my lats and I'm gonna pull my shoulders down to the hip. And then, now that I'm activating my shoulders, firing it out, exploding up, setting it back to where I got it. Lats, hike, explode, back. Lats, hike, explode, back. What we're doing is we're beginning the set the swing with a very tight, powerful lat position to help stabilize that shoulder, allow us to get more out of the swing. We're gonna do 10 reps like this. Woo! Down, fire it out. Boom. So, and again, if you're not doing swings at home, you could do squats. Just doing, oops, doing a set of 10. So for our first round of the hurricane, we're gonna do 10 swings, eight thrusters, and then 10 sit out with tripod on each side. So to review, Everybody give me four thrusters. And the thruster is, I've got my weight, full squat, overhead. Full squat, overhead. I'm just gonna do four reps to get myself ready for the training we're about to do. Yeah. So that's the thruster. The sit out with tripod. We're just gonna do two per side. Chris, you got your substitute, so you can do some ab stuff that's not a sit out. We'll be on the ground. And I'm gonna roll out, kick through, up, roll out, kick through, up, that's one. I'm gonna go two per side, kick through, boom. When I'm doing a sit out, the first thing I do to move is all of my weight pivots out to the outside leg. Then I sit and I drag that foot in to come to the tabletop. That's only if I'm going to do that tripod. So we're going to do 10 swings, eight thrusters, and then five tripod sit outs per side. That means we've got a lot of reps. When you get done with the circuit, you're gonna give yourself 
about 45 seconds of rest, maybe a little bit more if you need it, a little bit less if you're feeling on fire today. Uh, I'm feeling somewhere in between, so we'll see how it goes for Coach Josh. All right. So we're going to do three round, three sets of this first round, and then we'll move on to our next episode. Three, two, one, go. So we're moving. Ten reps. Now that kettlebell swing, we're going to do a normal swing for this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. really adds up. But it's a good thing we practiced all of our swings before this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tripod sit outs. One, <coughs> two, three, kick it through, both hips face the ceiling, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ha. Okay, 45 seconds of rest. So, one of the powerful things about a hurricane is that it's a form of high intensity interval training. You'll notice it takes a while for your heart rate to climb up to that peak. So you're ramping up the nervous system, ramping up the heart, and we then let it fall. We let it drop. So we got our rest in to bring that heart rate back down. So that's the interval. It's not a time interval, but it's a, a interval of intensity or heart rate. So we've let about 45 seconds expire as of now. So you should be feeling a little bit stronger, like your next set can be more powerful. So I'm gonna give it a shot. In three, two, and I'm off. Boom. Second round. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ha ha. Wow. I love it. Just got done with my swings. Time for the thruster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Moving through this tripod sit out. Second round. Kick it through. Woo! Two, three, four, five, six, seven, whew, eight, nine, ten. All right. Forty-five seconds of rest. I'm feeling it now. Now I'm really awake. So if you don't have enough weight to get that pump, make sure you add reps. Maybe doing 15 swings. That's a good place to start. See how that feels. But you want to get that sensation of very hard training. Got about 20 more seconds of rest if you're with me. If you're already going, awesome. Proud of you. Whew. 
We're going to finish this last set. set. And then we're going to start our next round. Okay. Starting in three, two, set the hips back, lats tight. Thruster, elbows are a check. So I'm gonna to touch the inside of my thigh. So let me know I've made it all the way through the squat. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Sit out. So I'm on the ground. Pivoting all my weight to the outside foot. Sitting through. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ha. Woo. Ah. Wow. All right, warriors. Really good job. That probably will be one of the harder ones. So, <clears throat> for our next round, we are going to do swings, supported rows. A supported row is you rowing the weight that you have, but you're gonna have one hand on your couch or chair so that your back is stable. So this is gonna allow us to really get dialed in on the technique. So I've got my chair here. I'm gonna take my hand, place it on the chair, get into a hinge, keep that back flat, and then I'm gonna point my palm at my knee and I'm gonna row, pulling that thumb into the rib cage. Go ahead and give me Eight per side. Six, seven, eight. So it's going to feel kind of awkward. That's okay. If you don't have an object around you, you can do an unsupported row just fine. And then the last thing that we're doing in our, our B circuit is we're gonna do a single leg, uh, an eccentric pistol squat, also known as a Snurpee. So what I'm gonna do is, with one leg up, I'm going to sit on the floor, lay down, do a knee grab, lay back down, stand up. That's with my left foot. Then with my right foot, I'm gonna do the same thing. Down, knee grab, roll over, stand up. So, we're facing a bunch of different directions. We're gonna do two reps on each leg to do that long eccentric. Now, if you're somebody who has a stiff ankle or a hard floor, and doesn't want to fall down on the floor, I 100% agree, then you could just do eccentric pistols to your chair or bed. Sit down, stand up. So go slow on the way down, fast on the way up. So you'll, what you'll do is, you'll do four per leg, while the rest of us are gonna do two per leg because we have to get stand back up. Okay, so we've got swings, rows, 
And then uh, the single leg, whichever version you're gonna do, I'm gonna do the Snurpee here uh, as a demo for everybody else. We're getting, getting started with 10 swings. Three, two, one, and rock and roll. Focusing on keeping those lats engaged. Wow, a lot happens when you keep those muscles activated. That's what we want. It's not how much weight you do, it's how you do your weight. I'm gonna do eight reps per side. Two, three, keeping that back flat. Five, six, seven, eight. Move over to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we go to the Snurpee. Your favorite and mine. <clears throat> Two per side. All the way down. Knee grab. Rotate. Back up. I feel like I can almost do that full pistol squat. Almost. So, not in a hurry. Quality over quantity. Back up. Yes. Ha. All right. That was one round, one round. I'm resting, taking my 45 seconds, getting my water. If you don't have your water, shout out to AA Ron and to Sarah Carlson, two dynamite team captains that just led their team to glory over the past six weeks through the quarantine challenge. But lots of motivational posters, a lot of, uh, a lot of cat photos, but seriously, a lot of love. And I am uh, always happy to have highly engaged leaders like you two. So thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Sarah. Oops, time for my second round. It's go time. Butt back, chest up. Lats on. Boom. Really keeping that upper body engaged. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Yeah. From there, I'm going into my rows. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Single legs. Nice job, Heather. Graceful as a ballerina, sitting down. Nice job, Bootsy. All the way down. One. Woo so. You might be resting now, getting ready for your last set. Whew, this is fun. I feel like I'm uh, getting a little dizzy from all the turning and spinning. <laughs> all right, we got one more round. 
One more round of B circuit, and then we're moving on to C. All right, Warriors. Halusa. Finish strong. B, 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 B circuit, B set. Last set. set. But back, chest up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Here we go. Rows. Quality over quantity. I'm pulling that thumb into my rib cage, keeping that back flat or arched. Four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Snurpees and, and pistols. Go slow. Get all the benefit from every rep. Whew. <laughs> oh, get a little tired. Fell down on that one. Don't want to. Don't have too many of those. That's right. When in doubt, rest a little bit more. Ha, 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 ha. All right, warriors. So, you got a little sweat going. It's time for round three. I'll let you choose your own adventure on this one. If you like the swings, you could stick with them. If you want to go a little crazy, you can do single arm swings. A single arm swing is the same swing that you've been doing. The difference is you're going to have one hand on the bell. When you're doing this, your, the non-active non hand is going to be outside. Active hand will have its thumb pointed in. So if I'm on my right hand, I'm going to grip, grip the left side of the kettlebell. I'm going to come back. My goal when I hike is I'm going to tilt the thumb towards my groin, explode out, twist that shoulder in so that lat tension can, can maintain, and then I'm going to have the thumb pointed horizontal instead of back at me, and then on the way down it comes back at me. Looks like this. Boom. So, you can do five on each hand for a total of 10, or you can do uh, 10 regular swings. It's up to you. You could play around with that. Then we're going to do a squat hold the front press. So, I'm going to squat, and I'm going to stay at the bottom of the squat, and I'm going to use my weight, and I'm going to do six front presses all the way out at the bottom of that squat. So, I'll do six front presses, and then we'll do the knee grab row for our third exercise. So I'll be here at the bottom, knee grab, then I'm rowing that or we're doing that barbell row, come back down, boom, boom, boom. So, <clears throat> Getting back there. All right, Warriors. This is our final round. Only the good reps. Being strong. Staying present. If you need a little bit more rest, get some. But we're going into it. All right, round or C circuit. Go ahead and start. I'm going to try out the single arm swing. See how it goes. Ha! 
That was a, not a great dismount. <clears throat> Squat hold the front press. Dropping down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent. Big grab row. Going through it. Up, row, up, row. So good. Working out those abs on the upper back, making it all come together. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ha ha, ha ha. Okay, so that was round one. <sighs> <Woo -hoo. clears throat> 45 seconds, getting ready for round two. I'm gonna try the single arm again. I didn't get the dismount quite well last time. If you're, uh, if you're fine with that, you could do that. You could also do the double arm swing. I'll watch everybody's version of the swing here before we get started. Round two, in three, two, one, go. Nice, great swings, uh, excellent. All right, Reba, I want you to hesitate. Let that kettlebell pull you over and don't bend the knees until that kettlebell gets underneath you and pulls you into the hinge. And then you're going to be a little bit more explosive. Oh, look at you, there we go. Yeah, hesitate, let that kettlebell pull you over. There you go. Loading those hamstrings and abs at the same time. That's right. So good. Digging it. All right, warriors. Squat hold the front press. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whew. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Ah. Uh. All right, warriors. It's go time. Coming down to the last round. It's time to dig deep. Stay focused. Make sure you're feeling the eye of the tiger and the thrill of the fight. I've got about 20 more seconds of rest. A little bit behind, but don't worry. If you're worried about you're not getting enough training in, we still have dessert after this round. So plenty of love left to give. All right, I'm going in three, two, one, and boom. Don't your swings. One, two, three, four, five. Coming through. Knee grabs. Rows. One, two, three, four. Five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Aha. Okay. Great work, Warriors. Finishing up, being strong. All right, Brenda, you can go ahead and go right into your Cossacks lunge to stretch. Got to get that hamstring and groin mobility here. So I'm going to step out with my left leg first, dropping down, pulling that toe back towards me, staying back up, stepping out, dropping down into the lunge, pulling that toe back towards me. We're going to do 10 per side. Brenda, we got to slow down, dear. We don't want to miss the workout. So go deep. So step slow. Now pull that toe on the down leg. Before you rush through it, pull that toe up off the ground on the trail leg. So you're going to sink slowly, pull the toe up, and that's that toe on that trail leg is going to face you. So that knee is going to turn up to the sky, and you're going to, it's going to face you. So I'm going to step. So this is my trail leg. That, that hip is going to turn over, and now I'm going to pull that toe back towards me. That's going to open that hip and groin and give me a lot of, a lot of benefit. So right, don't worry, you got plenty of reps to practice. Everybody's looking good. We're going to go from there into the four-point hip mobility. So the key here is we don't want to uh, arch the, well, we want to arch the back. We don't want the back to move too much as we go through our reps. I'm going to do 10 per side. I keep pushing through the pinky so that my shoulders are very active, but I'm not trying to move my, lower, my hips too much. Really good job, Heather, Brenda, Reba, looking good. Steve, I know you're doing a good job. Get your hands and knees closer together. I can see you through the void. And then last but definitely not least, the archer, we're in the plank archer here. So we're gonna keep our feet wide, up to the sky, come back down, up to the sky, that's one. We're gonna do 10 per side. So hips are gonna stay pretty high. Three, four, four, five, Five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. All right. Well done. Through a little adversity, through a little resistance, that's how you build strength. Henry Ward Beecher had a teacher who would yell at you, yell at him, and you have push-ups, kettlebells, and Coach Josh, but it's all the same. You struggle, you sweat, you build resilience, you build resolve, you drive a little bit harder, you're a little bit more committed, a little bit more confident the next day to continue to build muscle, burn fat, bring forth the warrior within. Let's get this party started. <laughs>